Eric Erickson is the editor of Red State and the author of Red State Uprising, a new book about what the Tea Party and other people who are newly active in politics will mean for America in the future. Eric, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. I wanted to begin, today in Politico, uh, Ed Fulner and Senator Jim DeMint write about what the Tea Party will mean for the policy debates taking place in 2011 on Capitol Hill. What do you think this uprising means for the 112th Congress? I think largely it's about accountability. Uh, in, in the past, it, it really took conservatives until the Harriet Myers nomination in 2005 to begin to have vocal criticisms with the Bush administration. Uh, and then immigration reform expanded it up to TARP and the General Motors bailout. Uh, now I think the Tea Party movement is here to stay and will be an accountability force next year. Now, in the book you write, there is no better bellwether of a politician's proclivities toward limited government than whether they request or defend earmarks. Can you explain? Right. What an earmark is generally is a line item put into a committee report or legislation by a congressman, often, most frequently, for a campaign donor, designating that a specific amount of money has to be spent on a specific project in a specific state uh, for a specific reason. Uh, it, it doesn't go through the vetting process of appropriations. It's not approved by Congress. It's not reviewed based on its merits. It's solely put there by a congressman. When you look at the bad legislation that's come out of Congress from Republicans and Democrats alike, whether it's TARP or No Child Left Behind or Prescription Drug Benefit or the Stimulus Plan, uh, members of Congress loaded up earmarks into the legislation to get members of Congress to vote for it. Well, I mean, we refer to the Bridge to Nowhere, the Cornhusker Kickback, the Louisiana Purchase. These are all measures that were put into legislation to get votes. Republicans adopted a conference-wide earmark ban for this Congress. Do you see that happening in the uh, next Congress as well? I hope so. Considering they made such a big show of it, it would be very disingenuous of the Republicans having made a show of it this year to abandon it next year. What's the difference between a conservative and a Republican? Well, a Republican, I, first of all, I'm an elected Republican. A Republican means you belong to a political party. A political party is about acquiring power to pursue your policy initiatives and, frankly, to reward your friends and punish your enemies. Uh, that's what both parties do, ultimately. A conservative is about an ideology. It is about, in, in the case of American conservatives, limiting the federal government, uh, expanding the rights of the individual. Conservatives use a political party to get to power to advance policy, but people who are Republican and not really conservatives, they just want to be a part of the majority. They don't really know what they're going to do. They lose their way along the way. Uh, you suggest that the federal government is doing too much and not doing any of it very well. Can you give some egregious examples that you cite in the book? The post office uh, being number one, uh, or at the lo local and state level, what everyone gives, the Department of Motor Vehicles. I mean, these are government inefficient programs that are, are better utilized in the private service or in the private sector. But consider a lot of the government programs today. The, the TSA, I, I was on a plane this morning uh, with line backed up in Atlanta. Uh, depending on which line you went through, you either had to take your belt off or not take your belt off, put your shoes on the belt or put your shoes on the bin. I mean, this is a government program. Uh, government in itself is a monopoly. Monopolies are economically inefficient. Having government expand into the private sector means greater inefficiencies. Why do you think Republicans are as much to blame for out-of-control government spending as Democrats? Well, it was the Republicans who passed TARP and the General Motors bailout and No Child Left Behind and, and the prescription drug benefit and steel tariffs for, for Pennsylvania. Uh, they're, they're to blame with the Democrats. The problem is where the Republicans spent a great deal, the Democrats then exacerbated it. They said they would be more responsible, and they haven't been. Now, you make the case in the book for right-sizing government. What does that mean? Right-sizing government means, is there an optimal size of government? There are constitutional limits to government that we've ignored, but there also are economic limits to government we've ignored. We've seen around the world, not just in this country, that government spending of 18% to 20% of gross domestic product is the most efficient size of government, where the economy can flourish, uh, government can meet the needs of the poor uh, without getting in the way of the private sector. We've seen in India, Germany, New Zealand, Ireland, Canada, and others, as government spending has gone down closer to that 18 to 20 percent range, the private sector has exploded. In this country, we've crossed the 30 percent mark, headed to 35 percent, and the private sector cannot compete with government spending of a third of the economy. What advice do you give to activists who are either newly engaged in politics or want to make a difference? 
You know, find a candidate. Everybody has, a, Morton Blackwell, the Leadership Institute, always says you've got three things, time, talent, and treasure. Every campaign has. Uh, you can get more treasure. You can only have so much talent. You can only have so much time. Applying those three to campaigns that individuals like. Uh, volunteer activists need to go out. They need to make a difference and have an impact with campaigns and policy issues. Uh, they can't sit on the sidelines. Too many people say they can't make a difference. And this year we're seeing millions of people coming together making a difference. Great. Eric, thank you very much. Thanks for having me.